so yeah we want to take this time to talk about the film uh the ups and downs of it the creation of it um just the people involved and all of that fun stuff but i think the first thing that we want to talk about is the overarching the culmination of this bigger body of work that uh that really i was brought into when i first met you and we worked on projects before this and so i think you should obviously uh talk about that so yeah the yeah. the big question uh not big question there's so many questions in life and that art can help you address and a lot of it has been this search for your inner self i've been listening to uh, another podcast recently that i'm in therapy and my therapist had recommended uh, art of happiness by arthur brooks and i've um this is at the tail end this is after all filming's been done and it's really helped us kind of navigate our own film through that podcast and through therapy and through community and through friendships and so these past five years i have invested in this trilogy called ours and that's when you were brought in between two and a half and then, then this final piece and the idea of hours, how we spend our hours, who we spend our hours with, why, and where. And that more than ever has been brought to light these last eight, nine months. I mean, you and I, nine months ago, are not the same people we right, are today. Right. No one is. Right. No one is, no matter what their position is in life. And it's a beautiful thing, but that's also out of survival, out of adaptation, out of evolution. And so to get to the hours trilogy, this is a way for me to artistically grow, artistically, but also, more importantly, emotionally, spiritually. And I have been so privileged to have a community here, you being the, the cherry on top, to create a way to express ourselves in safe communities, in safe environments where we're not all artists, Actually, most of the people I work with I wouldn't consider themselves artists. And this film also speaks to that, which we'll get into later. So the first one was, out of this Hours trilogy, was, what was that called? After Hours. After Hours, <laughs> Jeez, yeah. I feel so old, because I am older now. <laughs> um, but After Hours was predominantly me just stretching my wings for the first time. I have a pseudonym, Marie Emerson, and that was, Kind of a lame story, but I love it. And my, <laughs> all of my stories are a little lame now. But back in 2011, my cousin, Kate, who's in the film, we were at the National, League, National Gallery of Art, and she's a great writer. And she has a stage name, a writer's name. And I was, I don't know, I was 20 at the time, 21, and I was like, I, I wanted one, and I came up with Marie Emerson. Marie being, being my middle name, Emerson being my favorite poet at the time. So okay. my other name I go by is Silky Elliot. Silky being my grandmother's nickname, and Elliot, T.S. Elliot being my favorite writer then. So, so both are. And it allowed me to kind of escape in this alter ego, mm -hmm. Marie Emerson. And it allowed me to have that safe space for my own self, within my own self, to create, do new photography, talk about sex, do sex, talk about politics, religion, depression, anxiety, things that are day-to-day, hour-to-hour, minute-to-minute. Mm -hmm. And art has been a very therapeutic way to use literally your camera to work it out and not jeopardize other parts of your life. Right. I mean, I have a whole career that I love that works with communities and international and domestic development work, and I don't want to negate that part of me to succumb to the other part of me and vice versa. And that's what helped separate it, having two different names. And in that trilogy, that was what After Hours was about. What do you do after your nine to five? Right. And so after hours, nude photography, bunch of, I mean, I don't even remember, it was like over 15 kinds of um, backgrounds of women that were involved in that first show. Second show, which you came about, we had our podcast right before it, it was the Enduring Hours. Yes, Enduring Hours, which we shot 
we uh, shot short film we shot us. choice c yes with, yeah, yeah, yeah um which if you haven't watched it there'll be links below you can watch all this stuff so yeah Definitely. and that was you and i we had to do another podcast and i experienced puerto rico after the hurricanes the election 2016 had happened there's a lot of things happening God, in our so own long, really it feels yeah <laughs> i know and <laughs> It was a long time ago. That's it, crazy. I mean, it yeah. was four years ago, yeah. and yet it feels like 10, 15 yeah. years ago. And so you and I had worked together, and it found out that you and I had a really great chemistry, both on and off the screen, very fluid. I One of the things that I always say about this film is that, well, I wanted to make a film, and I got a best friend out of it. Right, right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And that's the energy behind all of this all of hours. But Enduring Hours was about that time, 2016, 2017. I think it finally came out in 2018, where it was three women and I, and we just we went political we went a little bit more of those spreading of the wings from the first show mm -hmm. really deep dive into heartbreak into figuring out what it is to be female in a very politically charged masculine dominating world where we're we were in our mid to late 20s at that time and not knowing left from right literally <laughs> left from right republicans right. democrats and then there was more than that I and mean, everything's political here but there's more to life right. and um there was a lot of in that time period as we all kind of there was schisms in the families there was schisms within our own identities and it fast forward to all of ours and this is the time where so the first show was about me the second show was about women and more women around me because there's only women in the third show i said all right we gotta we gotta extend this we literally and it's what we do in the film we literally have to invite men to the table we cannot just have this one-sided dialogue we have to we have to invite people not from our own demographics not right. from our own religious or political standpoints not from our own identities and that's very important to me because my life how I live it is I love to have different kinds of folks. I come from a military family, so I have a lot of Republicans, I have a lot of military people, I have a lot of people that look, that look, think differently than me in my own family. And I, it's hard, but it's challenging us forward to, to not always be bubbled in. Mm -hmm. And that extends to our chosen family, right? You're my chosen family, you're my chosen friend, you're my chosen family. I don't see the difference. And so it brings us to all of ours and it's, it 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 comes perhaps from my brain from my heart and my experience but it's totally influenced by those who were committed in this project no one was artist they would consider themselves artists per se well, definitely nobody was an actor no De one was an actor definitely. none of us are actors right. right and they had to trust us and we had to trust ourselves to to just work this out and we have we have things that th again this was all filmed before February of 2020 right so we were still dealing with the day-to-day -day, mm -hmm. and I'm so grateful we were able to do all of the filming we just happened to be lucky right we, we really just were lucky right to get any of, to, to get any of it down as much as that, that we did because yeah. when I boarded the plane to Japan I thought I was coming back in March and or in April and saying hey let's start it again and right. the last time we filmed was in March of 20 I mean February 2020 yeah and it's it, I feel grateful for that we spent our time getting all the people, getting on the places. This was very calculated and writing the script to a certain extent and getting as much as we could done. We're very much, you and I are very much, let's just get it done. Right. And we time is now. And exactly. that's what all of ours about hours, going back to the whole thesis of it, is now. It, yeah, and we... I, I, the thing is, I feel I hope that whatever the next project is, not necessarily documenting it on camera as much, but like making the notes of when we start to do things, because I know we spent bulk of it a, a year and a half off and on getting coffee, getting lunch, writing, right? You'd write some, you wrote the majority of it, you're adding stuff to the document, I'm looking at it, I'm making suggestions, you're writing more scenes, and we're just thinking through like how we're going to do it because you know we did it with virtually no budget no one influenced the project with any financial you know backing uh which was basically intentional we didn't have 
uh, you know, any prof- any professional actors, whatever, whoever those people, you know, anybody that does it on the regular. We didn't have any of that, um, and I don't know if that if any of that was on purpose, but it definitely fit into our like workflow and my background maybe not my background but definitely my thought process I'm like we, we use the same words a lot being fluid organic free flowing adaptive uh, roll with the punches you know yeah um, and going into any of these scenes and really any project that I work on that's not you know a corporate thing or structured thing where you know I have to do it a certain way I love being open to the idea of anybody coming into the conversation and also suggesting things and uh, the yeah. vulnerability was a big piece of it too. I mean, all these people were, they, they really did give it up. There wasn't one scene or one person that like was sort of on the fence. Like everybody definitely gave it their all, uh, you know, more specifically in some scenes, you know, with, with the paint, you know, Charlie just went a hundred percent like he gave everything he was covered in paint and these other guys are touching him all over his body and it felt fine it didn't feel weird when we shot it it was a really intimate uh just it was awesome because how many times in your life is something like that gonna happen it's not it's just it's rare to get those same people in a room and everybody's like down to and I have be, some of them just had met the first a lot of people I never met yeah, each other there you go and just be willing to be a part of it and also with little direction you know not little direction you you definitely were giving you know we gave direction but another thing that a lot of my influences with with filmmaking are from filmmakers who of course you know write screenplays and have structured elements to what they do but they also are very organic and they they look at things a different way it's not your typical you know hollywood everything has to look a certain way you know we we break the rules and we're going to do things the way that we wanted to do it and not necessarily uh your typical film is going to be made and i hope that you know that's what continues is you know the next project and um that we're able to to do that to really carry out the same mentality that things don't change regardless of you know who's involved that you and I are able to bring the bring people together and they get behind our vision whatever it is and and they get excited about it like we were because um yeah it just we never knew what was going to happen you know we you know we had an idea it was on paper and we talked about it but once you get there and you're shooting it and you're doing it you know we did we did some scouting and little things like that but as far as the the physical part of it that was all really done in the moment and Mm -hmm. that's what made it kind of what it was I think there wasn't all this pre-planning of telling everybody how it's going to be and what they should wear and uh, what's going to be happening and just we sort of gave them a few crumbs and then we hit them we hit them when we got there and then we just we let the camera roll yeah, and so. and and that for whoever does or does not believe in energy or not, I mean, it's these are family and our friends. These are people that we genuinely love and care about, and that we actually have communications with mm-hmm. and hang out with. Right. And I just feel like I'm not serving you well because I'm sad, or I don't, you know, I'm confused, or I, a lot of things going on, and I, I just. I want to make sure you're happy. It's you being sad that makes me sad. Cause the I'm whole child sad. scene. I mean, that meditation happened in my real life where my little self, I woke up crying. This was about five, six years ago. And I woke up crying here. Um, swear alert, we're outside my apartment <laughs> building. But I woke up here. I just woke up crying. And I closed my eyes and my little self appeared to me and and that like shifted a lot for me spiritually but also just in trying to get my life more to where I want it to be I you see who you want to be and you know it and you're working with yourself there so it's that it's this it's this push push and pull sometimes and luckily because you have those people 
around your community right. they can help graciously put you there mm -hmm. along with your own efforts and I find that what because we're fluid because we're adaptive that non-attachment component that's in our belief systems this is the only time I've been able to successfully do it I mean we're we're, we're not going to get into what it was going to be and what we had envisioned it to be because we're just not like that anymore but because we have that non-attachment to the work the work was the behind the scenes, the developing it, the, the, the talks, the, the meeting with people, the breaking down, okay, this is what this scene is about. Run with it. Think right. about your own lives. Exactly. And then go for it. And that's why I think you and I, what was it, three months ago, four months ago, we sat down and said, I think the film has told us it's, it's done. Yeah, I, I think that was the reality. And it was okay that we could make something out of what we had because well you just said it, that whole non-attachment piece but also uh, to also yeah give honor to like all the people involved and really who really put their necks out there for right. us to me that that was the biggest piece is totally what, when I'm when I'm going through and, and, and putting everything together yeah I'm seeing you know some these gorgeous shots that I love and just happened on their own and uh but more, more than that, the people that I'm seeing, I'm, I just get excited that they're even in this. Like, I'm behind the camera, and these people, even some of them, I had never met maybe till that day that we <laughs> shot. And they were so willing to just Well, because you're do, a nice guy. Yeah, to do what we wanted them to do. And you're friendly. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, no. Um, but... Yeah, I've, I've, I've worked on all kinds of projects over many years, and this definitely is by far the most unique experience, only because of, one, having, you know, a lot of different people involved that... Good. I really, don't remember how many how many people have we actually had. I, don't I think know. it was over fifty. It right? was a bunch of people. There's so many behind people, the scenes too. People behind the scenes from you know uh, locations that we're able to go into and shoot, and uh, people that just helped out. But all also, in the DMV area, which is great. Yeah, but also um, you know the therapy scene where you played uh, my therapist. I played the therapist. <laughs> you know, for me though, you know, obviously, if you're watching this, it's on my YouTube channel. So you know me somewhat because I try to be as transparent as possible as a person because, like, that's how we should be, right? We should tell people, like, what's going on. And so that scene, though, you know, I, I, I was being honest. It was a real conversation. It was not scripted. I talked about my real life and how, you know, things that were really going on are still going on. And so... Uh, I, I kind of pushed you for that. Yeah, but that, you need to get in front of the camera too now. Yeah, true. Um, but yeah, so like those aspects that have just never happened before, and I've never really had the opportunity to be in that setting to do that because other situations may feel forced. Like if I put myself in front of the camera and talk about my life in that way, it, it would feel forced. But this was almost a way to be myself yet play this character even though it's not fic it wasn't fictional it's weird isn't it? it it was in a sense and i hope that you know some of the other people that were involved that they may be you know eventually when they see it that they that they've thought that as well that maybe it brings back memories um especially going through a year like 2020 you know so hopefully we you know you've had you get something good out of it Production wise and the actual physical part of it with with gear and the way we did it that was that was another piece did we you know rent cameras and rent gear and put on this huge <laughs> we're a low budget no budget well, kind we, of group right but we we could have like we definitely like if we wanted to do yes, that we could have done a lot of things we could have taken there, that, that road was too, we yeah. might have ran into covid and maybe we didn't even get to fit who knows like the timeline might have got pushed back and maybe we're not even sitting here doing this podcast but uh you know, at the time it was like, hey, this is a no brainer. I have, you know, I have my Sony A7S II and I have all the gear we need and let's just go, let's do it. Like this is, 
This is the tools we have. Let's shoot it. Um, the therapy scene, Caleb Hargett, he shot that and he came on, you know, and he had, he's a filmmaker, so he came and, and shot that. And he's also acting in the coffee scene as well. He's the one who drops his coffee uh, in, uh, what's the coffee shop? Uh, Wide Down. In the Wide Down. And uh, so, you know, that was amazing that, you know, he, he gave his time and, and, and gear and, and came and did that. Uh, but for the most part, it was just me, like just shoulder rig, gimbal, and we shot. And I, I would almost even say that th as far as takes go, not a lot of takes. I mean, most of the scenes, we, we went with what we, ha what we got first, second time, specifically with stuff like um, with you and um, your older self at uh, oh, yeah. Sud House. Um, you know, we let it roll and you guys just had this conversation or uh, the paint scene and, and just all, pretty much every scene we sort of like let things just kind of happen. And to me, that's it's really special and it's heavy on me because that is just my progression and, and I, of where I want to be. And definitely through this project have been more unapologetic in answering questions of like, who I am as a filmmaker, like what kind of stuff that you're going to be working on or who you want to be in 10 years. And I think I had these ideas for many years, but this project defined it even more that I have to do things to put food on the table and that's, that's going to happen. But at this point in my life and in my filmmaking career, this is my progression. This is where I want to go. Like this is, a, a kind of a restart to things that I did years back where I want to write screenplays, I want to make original content, I want to make narrative films, uh, and that that's what got me excited. So it sucks that obviously COVID happened, that's gonna, it slows it down a little bit, but I think um, I just dream a lot about what's next for us because it's super rare to find that connection with you we, know we, were um, we have really a lot of blessed, good right yeah. there's a lot of good friends and there's a lot of people but it's out there that are definitely willing to jump on board and um and get involved but when it comes to the really minute details and in the thought process of what the outcome is going to be and what we want this film or piece of art because this film even though it's you know cut up into pieces it's to me it's more like walking into a national gallery mm -hmm. and looking at a Jackson Pollock or so it's much more to me like that than watching a traditional film because it is very abstract and it has many meanings to different yeah. people um and, what and I'm intended. okay with that like I think that's what's you know I think there's a lot of people that watch you know you, there's a lot of weird tv shows and weird movies and you know I think this fits into that category of some people would say well, that was that was bizarre like that there, yeah a lot of people are not gonna they, get it and and right. we, we intentionally did that because it's like a good good lyric right right yeah uh, a good lyricist no they oh. they draw upon their own lives but they make it open enough to where you can see yourself in it right you can see some aspect of a of your own life experience in one two of the scenes and you still 90% of it might not get but the but the people who do get it it's fun yeah it, definitely. again it it's funky it's something where we you and I generally speaking are proud and confident but we're not really cocky people right and I think that's because we are in the work in our own personal lives mm -hmm. we we take what we do day to day and we put it into art versus yeah. art into the day to day and which is beautiful in itself too so if we're if we're really trying to challenge ourselves again emotionally and spiritually and psychologically we need to put that somewhere right we need to put it somewhere where it's healthy for others to maybe kind of like a ball of clay something that they can also toss around with right and I, that's why that alter ego, that's why these other parts of us, it's why art is healthy to, and community is healthy. And, and it's kind of like, all right, Marie Emerson, Nick Mangle made this world. We invite you into it. Let's have some fun. Yeah. Let's create some art. Let's just 
see what happens yeah. and then no harm no foul because exactly. that is the work right. the, the hour to hour again the minute to minute showing up challenging yourself the outcome at that point is somewhat irrelevant right um that made me think of the music so the music so, yes but before even the music this this story this was just hilarious um so you you say uh i think you called me up or something you know and you said uh, I have this guy who's interested in like he has like a little band that gets together and Tom. they're willing to like <laughs> do the music for the movie. I'm like, holy shit! Like that's really cool. Like yeah, it's Tom Tolls and he's the cart the Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist. No, he's not gonna like you said that. That's okay. We love Tom anyway, and he's like the most interesting man. He he's is like the, the coolest. Do- was it the Dos Equis commercial? And he should be in the uh, so. <laughs> So I meet, yeah, I meet Tom, <laughs> and of course I'm like I feel like I've heard this name before. Anyway, I didn't know uh, who he was, honest to God. Yeah, amazing guy, and and we meet these other people who you I think knew Elise, of. Aaron, and these amazing um, musicians who literally Gretchen, his wife, Tom's wife is amazing. Yeah, who who basically everybody. you just pitched like this film, <laughs> and they're all like we're down, and it's just incredible. And like we met, and they they had a couple of jam sessions, and obviously again. Unfortunately, we weren't able to to bring all that to but life. But we were so, lucky enough to have to something, have something, and, and included in this. Included, and also it's all freaking luck. Tom man. Tolls is the narrator to the opening of the film, so yes, unreal. And we have to call Tom out here because Tom came, okay, and he sat down. Oh and yeah, he, we gave it to him the script he, two days he, before. He got that script, which was long, was pretty long. And he did it in one take. take. I was, it was unreal. And he thought, he he seemed like he was nervous. I don't know why. He seemed like he was pretty confident. But he did it in one take, which was unreal. So what you saw was first take. And I said, that's it. You're done, dude. Like, that's it. Walk I, away. I was so excited. Um, and so that was a really surprising piece to it. To just have somebody like that, again, super humble, loving, and willing to get he's clearly not you know he's a busy guy he has a real you know he has a job i don't know if he's that busy oh maybe he's not but (laughs) but just kidding i mean he he seemed you know he's a busy guy he works for you know big company and you know has to has deadlines and whatnot he's like he has that artistic element big time big time and then we've got roger right? right roger who that was the first scene we shot. Yeah, the first scene. The very was, first scene um, was a toxic relationship yeah. scene. So that's the one with, with you me and Roger, Roger and in I'm the basement of. I should have uh, done some more stretching before that. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Seda Nax shopkeepers yeah. and and man, it. I was tired after that. I bet. And yeah. and I'm happy that we took the first three scenes were Roger and I, and Roger was such a doll, such a nice guy because. He, he just, he, he gets it emotionally. Right. And especially that dynamic where it was really hard on me to kind of express it, but he was just right there. With, I mean, it's a very intimate, that whole scene is very, yeah, very definitely. intimate. And he was right there with me and he's supportive and got it. And then we have the second scene was with my little sister. That's right. actually my little sister. And, you know, you, when you do work with children, you have to always be a little bit not too forthcoming with them you want to protect them and shield them let them let them deal with their own problems but, not 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 project mine on but she, she did she did really good she, uh, first yeah. off she's clearly not an actor okay but hey if we didn't say that maybe you think she's a child actor because honestly yeah we did that was probably a scene where we did more takes because you know you're working with younger uh younger adults and so you have to kind of mold them a little bit but oh my gosh like the final takes from that scene are incredible i mean i really you really believe it i mean you really uh i don't think well that scene definitely i think the younger and older self scene well laura laura, laura is just she's amazing. a natural oh like, she she, did, she didn't care about the camera she did, oh she's I mean, made for the screen yeah and it yeah. just and whiskey helps whiskey does help i guess <laughs> i forgot you guys were drinking so yeah that that does help <laughs> Yeah. Thanks to thanks to Allison at Sud House, right? She yeah. she she's obliged us, and yeah, I mean that whole scene was definitely. I wanted to with when Allie comes up and hands hands me the check. I think that's life, right? Life is is you have these huge moments where the fact that you could possibly speak with your younger self 
and then you can talk possibly speak with your older self and your older self sift you with the bill right I, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think I just was like wow I mean that's life right there yeah. and that third scene that we had shot was the paint scene now these guys yeah. hadn't met each other Roy Bob Goo right Marianne, Charlie, none of them had met yeah. each other except for I think Marianne and Goo who are married. <laughs> also, that was another scene to bring back like us being willing to throw a bunch of cards in the air and whichever one we falls like that's what we're going with that that we had that we talked for a long time about where we were going to be able to do this scene because we're going to be like throwing paint and how are we going to do this and then a random person in where was that in northeast somewhere or northwest where tacoma i think it was in tacoma we were in maryland in maryland okay we're in maryland and uh <laughs> get your states right we're somewhere right now and so <laughs> but it was in somebody's backyard who wasn't goo oh yeah 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 it yeah. was a random stranger who was totally cool not to mention we had no idea what we were going into but it ended up being this really awesome old bathtub that I was so fucking excited about when I saw it. <laughs> this really cool old shed house thing. I mean, it ended up being just the perfect scene. And it just... Do you think I, that life sometimes is a little bit like that? Where you just put yourself out there and if yeah. you are fluid with it, it works itself out? Definitely. Because there's... I think I'm trying to learn that more. And I think there's a rigidness what happened here. to, the, you know, the way we carried out this project there's plenty of people that would have done it completely the opposite way where like like i mentioned earlier you know scouting figuring out where you're going to shoot talking to those you know people and, and and just doing it a different way and we sort of said hey you know well you took care of the logistics and, and the pr producing part of it which was huge and the fact that you just know people and I don't know. One person said, "Hey, this guy. You said we could shoot in his backyard. Okay, let's do <laughs> totally it. What I That's said. it. You would text me like I got a place. Okay, and I just trust that you. Maybe you didn't even say it, but whoever maybe told you, and we went with it, and then we just shot it. Or you know, we shot the the scene right around here with your cousin and Elise and um, Nicolette. And Nicolette, the, the female scene, yeah. and the male scene, or and like the female what, scene. Like, what are we going to do originally? We had some different ideas, and we ended up... Well, yeah, I got... Oh, yeah. We that, ended up doing yeah. it the way we did it, and we just did it. We just, like, this is where we want to be, and we just shot it. And, and we, it's all intentional behind exactly, it. Exactly. Sure, yeah. it can seem happenstance, and we can fluid, right, and we can be very, very lucky and mm -hmm. put ourselves out there, but it's all intentional when we are in that decision. Right. The fact that we started at the church, or rather ended at the church and the park. The park for me, which is why we film there so often, even before this this film, was because it's a the park, Malcolm X Park, is probably the my favorite place in all of DC and I just happened to live near it not in, I didn't even tend to live near it, and it just happened to all work out and that park is a, is a safe haven for so many and the church a lot of times are a safe haven and then you, the fact that you have to go through life to get to A to B sometimes and that feels more like this now than ever these leave outside your home and you feel like you're an obstacle course right. and so that scene was about that I mean not to go into it so people can relay whatever they want but it's this idea of getting from one safe haven and protecting yourself going out in the elements to another safe haven protecting yourself and that again is hours 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 it's this building blocks it's the community and the emotions through all of those hours all of those steps right. that encompass your day your life and to do that in an artistic way it is that closure